welcome to the Journeyman Cave, a podcast where we meet and chat with some of boxing's more seasoned road warriors. Hosted by Mark Shakespeare and Chris Scar. Welcome back to the Journeyman Cave, everybody. Round 53, Mr. Mark Shakespeare, how are we? Yeah, good, mate. Yourself? Ask me after weekend. Yeah, it's soon be <laughs> over, mate. It's soon be well, over. When this comes out, it'll have been over. I'll be, I'll be zen, like a monk. I'll tell you. Round 53, who have we got? We've got Kyle Whitton, mate. Might not be familiar to many, but um, funny story, I, um, I got in touch with Kyle, really. Future guest coming on, hopefully, called um, Lee Duncan. And when, obviously, we're getting Lee Duncan in, I messaged Kyle, because I know that he had a bit of a ding-dong wheel more than once in right. the ring. So I messaged Kyle to see if um, he had a question to ask for Lee. And as I got talking to him, he seemed to know a lot about his boxing. He was very passionate about it. And I know he's involved a little bit with the GBM scene now, and he's, you know, he's still around some of the current fighters now. So I just said to him, I said, would you fancy coming on one time? You've got a lot to say. And he, and he, will absolutely, he says, I'd love to come on, Mark. It'd be a pleasure. So here we are. We've got him. Um, not a journeyman in his record, but as you'll see in this episode, he knows quite a few, like Lee Connolly, Cassasane, sparred quite a lot of them. Liam Ra- Wright. Yeah, Ryan Hardy, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, Fort Reedy. And I think we both really enjoyed listening to him, didn't we? Do you know what? I, these ones, we're not sure what to expect, but and you think, because you're like, well, they've not got a journeyman, blah, blah, blah. These records, and like you, you know, keep saying it, records are for DJs. They end up being best ones sometimes, don't they? And he spoke so well, and like you say, he knows his stuff. He knows a lot of people from that area. I mean, only downside is a blade, isn't he? So. Well, the cat of everything. I mean, well, it? I mean, I don't like other lot either. So. No, we don't, mate. Do we? we just stay partial for both sides, don't we? To be quite honest. Well, we, we can be uh, with no biases next season because we're not even in their league, are we? So. No, we can only dream. Yes. Well, before we crack on, then please, if you you know you enjoy the podcast, give us a subscribe or a share or whatever it is on whatever millionth platform you've got on your phone these days, and tell your mates. Get word around. That's all we try to do. Reach as many years as possible. Yeah, and it absolutely makes a massive difference to us. It does. I mean, of a 50 episode, mate. and we've, Yeah, uh, we've done brilliantly, mate. I'm so proud of us. I've enjoyed the entire process. It's been a learning curve, and we've been at it best part of two, well, nearly two years, isn't it, now, yeah. since uh, releasing episodes. So let's hope it can continues. It's just one of these. Mad time of year for me, this is. Yeah, it's, it's but we horrible. keep going, mate. And like we he says, we're going to keep going for the small man and we'll carry on. Yeah, absolutely. So let's crack on with round 53 with Kyle Whittam. Uh, well, I'm seeing some names on here. And uh, Wayne Reed, Ben Davies. Who else has we had on here? Cassa Sane, Liam Wright. Yeah. Sheffield boy then. Yeah, born and bred. So I'm from. Blue or white. I'm red and white, <laughs> red and white, die hard. Yeah, season ticket holder. Is he a decent crap then now, mate? Is it a decent price down there? Well, I mean, if you look over other side, not it's it's a good price for us really mm. because I've just I've just renewed five hundred and thirteen quid, but same stand in pigsty <laughs> for those at home means Wednesday. It's like seven hundred plus quid, and I mm. mean they're doing well at the minute. I think I think they're. That they've got no gaffer who's connecting dots, I believe. Ah, so I pulled him out of that mess, didn't he? He did, didn't he? Though, to be honest, I thought they dead and buried. I mean, they were, I'm not ashamed to say they're a big club, like, and they've always been sleeping giants. Someone connects dots with them, they can do well, but just hope it's not in my fucking lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> not in our I've had, either, a, I've had a tough time, I've had good times against them. I went to Bouncing Day Massacre when we sat them down, they were brilliant. Hopefully we'll have an over. All I'm really concentrating on at the minute, I mean, it's been shit. I can't remember what it's like to win as a United fan, but I just want England to bring it home. That's all that matters at the minute. Yeah, it'd be good yeah. that, mate. Not be long. Is it a week away before it starts? Is it a week on oh. Friday? Week the fancy is. I did that until I seen it's cutting. It's cut Maguire. Out. It's cut Maguire. Grealish has got cut. Madison. He's Madison. Away, so I don't know. It's, I did, you know, I did fancy us. I still think we've got a really good, ch- probably the best chance we've had in a long time. But I'll be, I'll be watching second game in Albafira and I've just found out that Ryan Hardy will be there the same week. Oh, he's, oh God. <laughs> well, we might, well, we might as well give a mention, aren't we? I um, mean, come on, fill us in on Ryan. We've done a bit of sparring with him, haven't we? 
Well, we, we we start. I mean, I met him when I was eighteen. I, we we boxed on the same show, Country Park in Hull under Umber Bridge. That was the first time I met him. And after that, I think we we actually I didn't see him for a while. But then we crossed paths again because I I kind of moved away from my boxing gym at that time, which was Dennis Hobson's boxing gym, South Yorkshire's uh, boxing kind of bit at the time. And uh, I went to Mikota's gym. I don't know if you have you heard of Mikota. No, I haven't it's actually. A story no. for another day, mate. But uh, he had some good boxers and Ryan. Went went across there from Ingalls at the time, and then we got quite pally pally, and I got a job working for Dixon's Retail because he was working there, and then I, eventually I took him to uh, Sean Fickett's, right. which was Dennis Hobson's gym basically, yeah. and yeah we we become good mates. We had a bit of a blip, we fell out a little bit, but you know he come to his senses and realised he were wrong. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> it were over nothing really, like quite childish if you look back at it, but, you know, I don't want to wear his personal laundry, but he, you know, took a bit of bollocks for him to say sorry like, and, you know, I can appreciate that. 100%, mate. And um, so I've not seen him for a long time, so I'm, I'll, I'll definitely bump into him in Albafira, but he's fucking crackerjack. <laughs> he is, isn't he, mate? He is. He's, he's still one of our favourite guests yeah. for, for the laughs. No, just, he just lights up a room, doesn't he, to be quite yeah. honest? Okay, but I've always had, like, quite a lot of advantages over him. I reach, and I've kind of, you know, he'll tell you, he'll be honest himself, in the boxing ring, you know, we're just different. He was just made for me, if you know what I mean. I could keep him in my job. I could, I could mix it up. He likes to get on his toes, but if I can close distance... You know, I, I can get on top of him, but I were no good sparring with him. I were like light of weight, sometimes yeah. pushing crews away. No good. So there's there's a lot of unrealistic advantages. But you know, like even that being said, he can fucking whack. You know I bet I mean? we've heard that, haven't we? Mm, a few times. Yeah. Um you know, if he plants his feet, that's that that was his problem as a as a professional or and an amateur, it's just too busy bouncing about on his toes. When he plants, Nathan's opposite, he can plant his brother. I remember once we were sparring at, you know, I don't know, old man Dennis Hobson's gym at Don Valley. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, I, I, was, I was just kind of bullying a little bit, if you know what I mean. I was pushing down him when he was knackered. And he, he was pissed off at me for whatever reason. And round went and he just fucking laid a left duck on me. Oh. Uh -huh. Like on Sly. And I, I was like, fucking cheeky bastard. But <laughs> I thought you fucking out rape punch that, you yeah. little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but. But like he just, it, you know, he's a knothead as well. Like, but he were also one of them where we've got quite a lot of respect for each other. You know what I mean? So, it, but he can. It, there's been a few times where he's whacked me. And I'm thinking if you whack somebody your size, you can put him out. But he, he never plants his feet. He's he's always on move all the time. And I think that's ultimately what didn't help him. You know what I mean, he's a lot better than what his record yeah actually suggests. Yeah, he's a good kid, is Ryan, and um. I don't think he achieved. I think he could have achieved a bit more actually when he was in that ring. If he'd, yeah, but, you know what I mean. It's all about guidance from time to time, though, isn't it? Really? Like, like I say, I know that he, he he bounced about too much. You know, he was always he's, he just got to be able to plant his feet, put himself in the right positions from time to time, and and he weren't able to do that unfortunately. And that was his style, but would crack if he wanted to. Yeah, Nathan more so. He says that, didn't he? He said, "I'm sure he if I'm." Said, Ryan said that himself. He said that in, in the interview. Ryan said he says, "Ah, Ryan." He says he used to took the Mickey. He says he used to put him out, and he says mm. they knew that. He did get some upsets on road. Yeah, that's what, he, that's what he said to what He says if they ever went a bit too far, he says, yeah. he made sure he sorted him out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'd like to get on in the future, to be quite honest. Yeah, before before I went before I went to COVID, I, I had this like spree where I was just training and lost loads of weight, got to. A, I was looking well and I was training a lot with Nathan. Mm. Um, I was doing like eight rounds with him because he'd got fights coming up. You know, he was trying to win the central area, trying to get into the right mix. He was were, he were, he were winning some kids, he was losing some kids, getting some draws. So he had a good mix him. i surprised he got some work, to be fair, because it wins he got. But yeah, I, I mean, some, once you get into the sixth, seventh, eighth round, if he's put you up against a rope, I mean, I, I, like, he could walk onto a few shots, bless him, but... Also, he'd, 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 he'd whack. So, yeah, good kid and all. Yeah. Nice kid. Yeah, he is, mate. Who would you say best you've been in with in sparring, mate? Because you must have sparred with a fair few good ones in that calibre <laughs> yeah. you're with. I'd say, I mean, 
the proper answer is the best person I've been in with is Clinton Woods. Yeah. But I, 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 he went in there giving me his best performance. Uh, I were a young kid and he was just toying around with me. So he's the best person that I've had the pleasure of sharing a ring with. It's the biggest hiding I've took. I've took a few. There's, there were two Brookses, Scott and Stuart, Stuart Brooks, from Mexborough, I think. So anyway, Scott went pro under Dennis Hobson and had quite right. a few fights. Stuart, unfortunately, died. He right. got run off. Um, yeah. I, think, I think he got run off. I think that's... I, c- I can't remember rightly, but he, he were an ABA champion and I were, I were training for novices, amateur novices at the time. And they both just come out of nowhere. There were another guy called Mark Brooks, no relation, but he brought him into the gym. And uh, I don't, do you know who Mark Brooks is? No, not really. No, I can't say there are any Brookses. Mark Brooks, I don't, can't recall where he's from, but he ended up getting, he was boxing for British title and ended up, he were winning and got stopped in last round. On, right. And he got a brain hemorrhage and that, that stopped him from fighting on. But um, anyway, this kid, Stuart, Stuart Brooks, who unfortunately passed away, we were like carved out of a fucking mountain. Yeah. He, he, were, he were a unit and I were only a little whippersnapper at the time. And, you know, sometimes you can spar against people who are built like a brick shit house and box rings around them because they're slow, but this kid were fucking phenomenal. And he mullered me. I, d- I didn't go down, cre- give me send a bit of credit, but he yeah. fucking mullered me. I would bust up, claret everywhere, and I remember it as if it were yesterday. I took a beating off of Liam Cameron and all ones. Mm. I'd just come back off holiday. It was we just before I fought Lee Duncan. Yeah. You know, draw. Yeah. I'd come back off holiday and just found out that, you know, I'm t- I've turned pro. I've signed, they'd signed Liam Cameron as well. So Liam were under Chris Smedley's tutelage at that time. Yeah. And he was surrounded by Nicky and uh, the late Luke Smedley. Yeah. Bless him. So I'd just come back off holiday and I thought, like, like I'm, f- I'm fighting in four weeks. <laughs> Being on a bender in course. <laughs> You're the first one who said that, mate. <laughs> I was probably half cutting ring at that time, um, and I just thought Liam's in. You know, Luke, Luke were in, Nicky were in. There were loads of there were loads of people in. They you know, like, let's just get sparring. You know, like just get into it. You know, so I'd, I'd got no kit, no nothing. I just thought, fuck it, let's let's go. Anyway, nobody wanted to spar at that 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 particular moment, and then I just punching bags and then next thing you know I got tap on shoulder from Nicky I don't know if we're Nicky or Luke they both look exactly fucking same at the time <laughs> they went oh Le- Liam Cameron will spy you so I get to the ring I've got big 16 ounce gloves on he got top 10 blue with white things you know straight away yeah. fucking 10 ounce gloves Yeah. no gum shield so I think I got a gum shield I went alright no bother and he just won ABA title at the time but I didn't even think I wanted it because I'd sparred Nicky and Luke way back when, when I were training for in amateurs, and he weren't nowhere near. He, they would stand out too, and I thought, oh, I'll be all right here. And oh, fucking, he pinged me all over. Like, give me a right. He only sparred me for two rounds and, and then got out. Not that he needed to. And I was fucking grateful for it. Like, Get the fuck out, you fast cunt. Anyway, he, he, he perforated me eardrum. Give me a right towsing. Is it in two rounds? Ah yeah, I just um, and and then one of the another amateur kid got in, and I would I was just gassed. I mean I don't I'd been on holiday. I was, I was out of shape anyway, but like I just fucking walked around for this other kid for a couple of rounds, thinking he's just mullied me, uh, and, and I need to get fit basically. <laughs> and I've I've, I've sparred with him plenty of times after. I didn't get mullered as much, but also I've had. I mean I, I did four rounds with him. And it, it, First punch hit me with a body shot, took up and down. I mean, I thought I'm gonna have to play possum for a bit here, but mm. he's an, he's one of these kids though, Liam. That he's fucking underachieved. He, he's a special kid if he puts it. And he's a bit right people now, and he's had a fucking tough time. Yeah. I don't know if you've, got, I know, we, I know, I've heard little bits about him, like you said, but yeah. I can't believe. I mean, he went on, he won a Commonwealth title, and then obviously it went a bit tits up with. You know, he got a bit stubborn about. They said he got cocaine in his system, right? Like, and. It, he basically said, well, this is his story. And I know there's two sides to a story, but I kind of believe him. He said, like, at the end of the day, they said, if I plead guilty, I get a six-month ban. Yeah. If I don't, then I'll get a four-year ban. But, you know, if, you've, if you don't believe you've done it and you're stubborn, yeah. you know, if someone were guiding him properly, they'd have just said, just take ban. It is what it is. But then he's took four years out, he's gone through depression. <sighs> He'd be like, 
I remember seeing him with a fucking massive. Yeah. And now you want to want to see him. He's in some rate shape. It? Yeah, he's looking well. He's he's fighting Lyndon Arthur next. Brilliant. I look Channel forward 5. to that. Yeah. So Is that a Channel Fiver. Yeah. Oh, definitely look out for that one, mate. Mm, definitely. Yeah. You see how it's medley, is it? I know he's been going through a tough time, haven't they? Obviously. Yeah, what yeah. Obviously, when I found out he passed. No, I don't, if I'm honest. I don't. No. I don't, see, I don't have a lot to do with him, like, but I, I've I come across Nicky when I were, I were training for So, at the same time when I got mothered yeah. by that Stuart Brooks, I, I was training for, for Novice Championships and mm. they took me to their, their gym at the time and he'd, he'd, he'd lost a Khan in, in ABA final. So, when I sparred him, he were like, fucking, like, they were just, you know when you go into different gyms and you're trying to you're trying to find your own way but then they were just people and they were just level above and yeah. th- there's a time where I cr- crossed Nicky where he's took too much time out and then I've progressed and then I've had even spars with him but again he's just a, Nicky, Nicky I, I hope you don't mind me saying this another fucking waste of talent there's a a lot, few, not fair for him to say that yeah. but that's a, that's a compliment yeah is it, like, it is it's Nicky. a compliment that, that, there's a couple of people who said that to me not on it on obviously I am friendly on Facebook with him and um, you're not the first to say that and like he says that's a compliment to Nicky yeah. mate you know what I mean I think he'll he'd nod his head at that yeah I, think I hope so I think he would because I believe I believe if he if it, you know I think as well there's, there's in this game guidance mm. it, it, massive it it's massive and I think it like like I'm I'm grateful that, that I saw Liam and I um uh, when at Wayne's for G because he were on a GBM show and I'm grateful that um Grant Smith's got older him. Because he's a good person to have around. You'll, you know, you'll, you need somebody who's going to call a spade a spade, tell you how it is, and can get you into shape. And he's, he's in shape, and and that's what Nicky needed. I'm not saying his dad's a bad, bad bloke because his dad guided him, and mm. I don't know. But at the end of the day, sometimes you, you need more than just your dad. Like yeah. my dad told me to do something. Time to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't really, because he'd batter. <laughs> but, but like my old man. Wanted me to fucking be like Mike Tyson. I said, mate, you've not blessed me with the fucking yeah. nouse to Your be fault, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've got small cocks <laughs> and it's all because of you. <laughs> so we're in with GBM then now, mate. Doing really yeah, well, well aren't they? Yeah. It's, uh, it's um, going it. really well from strength to strength, isn't it? It's brilliant, if I'm honest. It's yeah. refreshing because... That's the word I was going to say. You're checking it out of my mouth. Yeah. Because... When I come through small old shows, fucking, you know, you'll see you, we've been discussing earlier which shows what you've been to. But what is a GBM show? Is it is it actually classed as a small old show? Because you're getting what an experience as a as a viewing fan that's beyond a small old show in my because a small old show is budget. You know what I mean? Like everything's cut back. You know, it's bare. Get him in ring. DJ's probably somebody front miners. This this is like oh, it's, next level. It's, oh, it's next level. It's a TV show yeah. waiting to happen. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, to say how long it's been going and now talk sports on board, it just proves mm. our quality it is, to be quite honest. Yeah, 100%. He's, he's got a good product and I think... And it's what we need. We need we need something different. Exactly. And for us, for people like us, is is our, our doorstep man as well. So, I mean, our, our box not done any Sobson shows and, you know... No disrespect to Dennis, but he were a small old show. He had he had marquee people like Clinton Woods and he had Jamie McDonald and they had a different journey where he managed them and they went on to TV shows and he, he just managed it. When he's promoting, it's just, you know, you've got to sell them tickets. Hard as fuck. You know, is he? I mean, he were in York all of a week. Great. And like watching it on YouTube, brilliant show. He's just crying out for a, a TV deal. And once he gets that TV deal, I mean, like, I love Eddie and I love Frank Warren. You know they've 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 been brilliant for boxing. We need a new generation to come in. Yeah, yeah. And is it? And that what he's doing with his product is delivering some good fifty fifty fights. Yeah. And you know some top names against Stevie Levy on a couple of times as well. And she's a class act and all, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, um, yeah. She's I know done they well. I know they're on one the other week and like something like twenty five was someone watching it at one time. Yeah. I mean. That's some going that. Yeah. For a woman's title fight, you know. Exactly. Which, well, I mean, in respect to Izzy for getting that on. And I enjoy watching them. It's like, and it's the fact of my it's free. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. It's like, we can't afford 24, 25 pounds yeah. for a, every, for all these big box officers. I mean, these last couple of weeks, haven't they? I mean, there's been Taylor Cattrall. Yeah. We've had Fury and Newsick. Yeah, I mean, if you want to pay for all these, that, they're hundred pound out of pocket, aren't they? Aye. But I see some good classics on them G- 
No, you know, like, some really good sh- fights. You're always you're always here. I mean, I can tell you some classics that I've heard on small, uh, I've I've watched on small old mm. fights. But for me, you know, is uh, first of all, if you're a fringe boxer that's not with Matchroom or not with Queensbury, and you can't get you can't get on TV deals, you know what I mean? Is he's your man? You know, speak to him because. That's the person who's can who can get you to that sort of next level. He's got that product, but for me, he's a great kid anyway. And the difference is, as a manager, a promoter, he's also been in a boxing ring, and I think that stands that for makes- a lot. He's not what he doesn't want to take the piss out of fighters. You know, he wants to make sure that they're compensated correctly, um, that they're looked after, and you know, he needs them as much as they need him because he needs to. He wants to get to that deal. So he's brought. He's got Shaquille Thompson in now. who's a fucking rate fighter. Yeah, he, he's one I definitely want to. I I went to a um, a meal, didn't I? Manor boxing gym. Went for yeah. a meal at Manor box a couple of years ago, and the man's a complete unit in it. He's huge. Mm. I mean, he says go on, he says go on, check. You have a photo. I said, I'm doing a photo with a champion. I says I refuse. Mm. I said I'll have him with Carl Sampson instead. <laughs> and the memory, <laughs> and um, the memory have one with him and a face off, and he was huge. Yeah, and he's a unit and. I thought, I thought it was going to be another one of them, a waste of talent at one point because you know he didn't quite take off with B because he were on BT with Frank Warren at one point. He didn't quite take off, but I knew he had talent. I worked with his mum, so me and Ryan worked with his mum. Ryan, Ryan I worked with his mum, and she were always saying like we're going to. And when we found out about him, we've obviously monitored his career. But since since uh, Izzy's got older him and signed him fully now, I think he's one of. A few that I've signed with him full time for now. He's done really well. His last fight were, were epic. Well, I know I heard rumours going round, like he says, that he struggled to sell tickets, mm. which is like we just said earlier, and we always say that it can be tough. Mm. But now he's got Izzy guiding him. Oh, like that. I mean, absolutely amazing. I mean, like, he's, yeah, when, I were, when I went to the fight, I, I, I wound up ring sideway with Chef United team. <laughs> so, so obviously, I'm a, I'm a blade and. I got introduced to Ollie McBurney and, and um, we were just talking to him. But We had him first, you know. No, we did. Yeah, he did, yeah. Oh, I love him, man. What class here and all, yeah. you know. He's good. Like, I, like, he introduced himself to me. I like, like, I'm Ollie. Nice to meet you. Shut my hand and stuff. And I've got a rule when I meet boxers, uh, footballers is like, I don't talk about football. Mm. The last thing they want to do is come to a boxing show and talk about it. And they just lost to Burnley. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I don't. In fact, Ollie, I don't want to talk to you about football, mate. <laughs> Um, so we were talking and we were just talking about all, all fighters he would fucking bang into his boxing right and just having it like he, he were he were leaping praise on Shaquille so just having him as a as somebody who's coming to look to support him and he's he's getting it out on social media see when I was boxing we didn't have all that mm. you know what I mean so he was getting a lot of promotion through through Sheffield United team when he won Izzy and Ollie McBurney got him onto Pitch, pitch Bramall Lane, yeah. so that that were good, and I forgot her first name. Hotwell, is it Katie Hotwell? I'm not sure. What oh yeah, she yeah she's doing well, isn't she? Yeah, she's doing well. She's won a Commonwealth title, yeah. hasn't she? So she she were on pitch oh, as well, good. and she she's a diehard blade as well. So you can't have everything, can you? Though really. <laughs> so yeah, we're good to see. They, they're getting out there now, and and again, you know, it just needs somebody who's got that nouns to look after, you and that's what Izzy's doing. Well, the way fighters are I talk to about them is when if they do get on the shows it's, it's, it's the entertainment and you know the lights and you know yeah. when you put the stuff on behind as a journeyman and stuff and in a way you don't get that much do you no no you don't and you know it, it makes them feel a bit better as well yeah. you know what i mean it's and that's what it's all about it is it, it's the atmosphere that it create that he creates with his shows i've been to loads of i mean like you're not magna yeah i hate it i think it's shit shit venue but when i, I was there over a week on GBM show, it were absolutely rammed, and the atmosphere. It were, I've I've been there twice where atmosphere has been good. Mm. It, it's because it's it's more it's long. It's not like. Were it a GBM that, show we went? Oh, G, we went to saying. GBM show with Jake Pollard. So I have been to one. <laughs> I went. Yeah. Taxi dropped us off around bins at back. I dropped me. us around bins. We couldn't get in. He, yeah. he dropped us. <laughs> well, these two, these two dodgy blokes walking around with crocodiles <laughs> on the t-shirts around back out, yeah. and we come round. They were like Porsches, everything outside. Oh, oh yeah, fucking hell. 
Yeah, that was. Like, yeah. I thought we were in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> like we all, we all, <laughs> we all Ferraris and things like that. What's going off here? Yeah. Hey, well, if he's an hour second, he knows we can call now, doesn't he? I'm cheap. Yes, he's there. Uh, have a word. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a word with him. Good we'll, lad. We'll he's telling me. He's telling me. He'll better do his toll than all. Yeah. I will not start but, talking about him on show anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's he's doing well, is he? I'm, I'm, I'm well proud of him. Yeah, I, I, when you mentioned about GBL buzzing, to be quite honest, because nobody, I haven't really spoke to anybody about it, but I really love watching shows on yeah. YouTube. And like you said, it's free and everyone can watch it. Yeah. I mean, Make yeah. the most of it while you can. Exactly, mate, because it will get a TV deal soon. And yeah, I'm, I'm just excited for him. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, he's, I've never come across somebody who's just built something from ground up, because that's exactly what he's done. And he's got right people in. And, you know, the fact that he's got Adam Smith, who's, Arguably the voice of boxing. I thought that were unreal, to be yeah. quite honest. I thought, what a what a what a cool that is. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's doing really well. Gallivanting round side. He better fucking take me to Saudi Arabia one day for a big fight. I think I deserve it with this promotion I'm putting on here. I, I uh, think he should. He ought to do, shouldn't he? I mean, he's yeah. going to get at least five listens, isn't he? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Double figures. <laughs> exactly. Can no. we? Can we? Sorry to interrupt, but can we just go back a bit and like, have you always been into boxing? No, not really. Like, you know, when people talk about boxers, they've got like, I got bullied at school and that's how, oh, my bike got nicked like Muhammad Ali and I wanted to beat up below. My, my, <laughs> mine's Skeg Vegas. <laughs> sorry, I, Skeg Ness. Never? So, no. So my, me, my best mate, and he's still my best mate to this day, he were an amateur boxer, kid called Aaron Daniels, good kid. And we'll, we'll bring Liam into that at some point, Liam, mm -hmm. right? But he were, he were, Amateur boxer, he, he boxed uh, Rocky Fielding, uh, he boxed uh, Danny, Danny, Danny Price. Now, not one from Scarborough, I don't know if you, but it went Oh, uh, yeah, I yeah. know, yeah. He, he's, a, he's a waste of talent and all while I'm at it. But he, he just dropped off at radar. I don't, but I think he had quite a few personal issues. Like, I think he ended up raising his brother or sister or something. Mm. So, from like a young age, like some yeah. of them had and gone through. Yeah. 16, you know, I didn't know many boxers. Obviously, the Naz era was in and around that time. So I knew Naz, and because I'm from Sheffield, I, I looked out for results, but I never, like, actively went to try and watch his fights. So, but then after that, just got hooked, really. Like, invested heavily yeah. watching. And then, you know, Clinton Woods were Cocker Jim at that time, so I followed him, got emotionally involved. And I'm from the same area as Clinton, his, his gym's like... He's still doing well, his gym, isn't he? Yeah, his, his gym's a two-minute walk from my house, pretty much. So I never go. <laughs> but <laughs> two kids deep now. I understand, so, mate, yeah. So it's yeah. only really two minutes from your house, then, is it? Literally, like stone throw away, yeah. All right, well, he did tell me off on those woods, he? Yeah. Once. I did, I, I once messaged him about a book, and I said, can I ever buy a signed book off thee? And he says, um, yeah, no problem, Mark, yeah. I says, oh, can I, I don't drive, but can I meet you at Meadow? He goes, no, if you want a sign book, you come to my gym now. Yeah. And I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I <laughs> well, Main Streets of Westfield. Is it Westfield? <laughs> yeah. I'm not really, even, I'm very, I don't know much about Sheffield. I mean, Scarfy knows a bit about working there on that, but I don't know much about it, you see, so I didn't know yeah. where about it was. But that was some years ago, that, that time so goes fast, doesn't it? Well, read, read, I read his book. Um, when I, I only read books on holiday. Mm. Uh, and now I've got two kids. That, that Even that's gone out of the window. 100%, <laughs> so, mate. Uh, but probably one of the best books I've ever read. And not, not necessarily because it's just because it's so relatable to me. We're mm. from the same area. You know, we're, you know, I've watched him. The only differences between me and Clinton is he's a world champion, <laughs> or was, and he's a... Fucking pig. <laughs> he's, a big, he's a pig, is he? Yeah, he's a Wednesday boy, you know. Oh, is he? And he loves it. But but no, he's he's also not a no, he's a good lad, you know what I mean? I, I, I back at you were like me, he's still is probably like one of my heroes. Like I used to really look up to him, really respect him. You used to get right nervous about him, you know, fucking cringe hearing that. Yeah. You used to get right shy around him. Did you? But, yeah, but I can imagine Clinton's not like that no, at all. No, no, like you know, somebody that you can be really like proper working class man. You know, like you think about if he were in and around this era, it'd be fucking wadded. But mm -hmm. and I say, oh man, imagine if you were from this era. I, say, I don't give a fuck about money. Not bothered. A, not lot, bothered. Don't, a lot don't, mate. You're not bothered about fame. Not bothered about that. It just like, it still goes potting around Mosbury every now and again, uh, having a sup. You know, big Wednesday night, likes to get stuck in. 
he's just a good man, really. I'd like to meet him, to be quite yeah. honest. I mean, I did meet him once at Elsick, and, and I, was like, I was a bit same, I was a bit shocked to see him, like, when I saw him there, and he yeah. says, come over and see it, Jim, come over and see it, you know what I mean? And I thought... Good Jim. Yeah, it is. Like, he gets I, a lot of yeah. reviews. Yeah, that he, one does, and Manor does as well. Yeah, he's he's, he's got... His, his son's training there, but you don't don't really want to put a lot of pressure on his young gun because obviously, you know what it's like. Oh Ca- yeah, Campbell Campbell Latin's gone through it, Conor Ben's gone through it, and I don't think he wants that for his young gun. Not nor does he need to box, but you know he's he's making his own way apparently. Good, um, but then he's got some good kids. But I think when he first started out training, he didn't really want to train amateurs, so he just wanted to keep himself busy and not at home losing his fucking mind and. Help, you know, help out with community. Yeah. But I think it's getting to a point now where it's spiraling a little bit. Mm. So, I, you know, I don't know where he's at or where his head's at, but just top bloke and it's just a pleasure to know. Yeah, Doc. That's something we'll have to keep an eye on. I'll have to go down one day, man, and get me a book. Uh, I just don't know where West Fields is. West there. <laughs> I'll come back with you if that uh, wants me and I'll yeah. get trained back. <laughs> so I've got a bar in my garden. You can plot yourself up in there. Hey. Telling me things like that. Oh, good God, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I'll never get him out. Uh, it's de- so it's decorated all Sheffield United like so. How long then, in, you know, till you started it a bit amateur fights? And- in, in them days, it was tough to get fights. So we were training at Don Valley, old man Dennis Hobson's gym at this time. Sean Fickett. Well, I'm, I'd Can we have a quick talk? Sean Fickett gets mentioned a heck of a lot yeah. and he never gets the credit that he deserves, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put the on spot here, Kyle. Let's have a quick talk about him because, right. you know, he seems like an absolute legend, to be he quite is a honest. Legend. Yeah, and we always he gets mentioned on so many, and we we skip through him. And I think it's only right now. When I saw you were coming, I thought I think you agreed saying we'll have mm. to a little talk about him. I think cause you think he deserves it. Yeah. So I mean, Sean, other than three amateur fights, so I've made turned and I went to another gym for a bit, mm. but I come back with me with me fucking tail between my legs. Please take me back, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Is is the app we call him the boss? Is is an he is an absolute legend. Probably too nice for his own good, which we'll come on to. Which you mentioned you're too nice for his yeah, own good. Yeah, try on, mate. Yeah, yeah. He is he's sacrificed. He's just married to game. Mm. He sacrificed time with his family to put time in to his extended family, really. And then there's people like me who's like who we think he thinks off an awful lot about me. And he, he 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 got a lot out of me, you know. He, he, he was talented, and then I just fucking you know go out boozing and shagging birds, which he you know he don't need. It sounds like Paul Royston, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> playboy. But like, do you know what I mean? He, he he's put a lot of time and effort, and he's got all of this kid now na- up taller. Always, I've never seen anybody train like him. Absolute, Machine, yeah, but just loves it. And you've got to, haven't you? You've got to love it, and. He, he like morning night is 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 Sean's dream. Him and Sam Matkin, but Sam Matkin had to. Sam Matkin got got into law. He got a law degree, and we'll come on to him if you want at some point. But hmm. you know he's probably best. He's trained Sam, or or he's got most out of him. But he is an absolute legend. But again, he needs to be just concentrating on his fighters now, as in it should be him, and whoever he's got, even if he's got a few amateurs. But then he's doing keep fitters. You know, he's got he's got a young family. He's got a family to to provide for. I just think if he just spends time in developing people, he can do so much. But then he's just getting pulled away because he's doing other things like keep fitters and etc. It might have changed. I've not seen him for a while. It might it might it might be on top of this. It might have got a schedule. But I feel like even other gyms where he's just been took advantage of, probably got paid pittance got a full-time job you know realistically you know this kid could just you know he's had a few people come through the door if he just gets hold of somebody and is allowed to just develop them mm. and and nurture people and, and be able to earn earn from it properly. he deserves to don't it, it sounds yeah. to me like he deserves to earn a living from boxing yeah yeah but you, it, there's, there's two ways he goes about it really he gets he gets good people in and he gets paid well or he gets volume in and gets paid from volume, and at minute it's just the volume of people that he needs. But you know, hopefully one day he gets a bit of a break, and somebody goes on wins British champions because he's capable. Yeah, he's really capable. It, that guy can get, he can make you train hard. You know, you'll run through a brick wall for him. Only thing, only thing that I've got negative to say about it, it's not negative. Maybe it's something that he needs to work. 
it just doesn't say anything bad. You know, sometimes I needed somebody to go, Kyle, that was shit, and tell me it was good. You know what I mean? Because he just, he just wants to get, he, he thinks he's getting best out of you and just saying, come on, he don't want to break your spirit. But sometimes he just needs to like be a bit direct with people because they're big boys. Yeah. And just tell say, listen, that was shit that you're better than that. Mm, Do you know what I mean? It. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit like a football manager, isn't it, really? You get some players who need an arm around them and some people in a kick-up backside yeah. and you've got to be able to do both, haven't yeah. you? And he can definitely put an arm around you. Yeah. Mm. And, and I feel like, you know, I'm not saying I've not had four lights with him. You know, you know I'm, I'm fucking hard work. I'm a mm-hmm. hardy bastard. <laughs> and I'm sure he's fought fucking, you know, at one point I've left him, not because it was anything to do. We didn't have a breakup or a fallout. I just had my head turned a little bit, but you know, like I say, come back. And, you know, I had all my pro fights with him, yeah. rest of my amateur career with him. You know, all, all, all my best wins, other than Wayne Reed, I beat Wayne Reed with somebody else, but other than my best wins, I've been with, with Sean. He was a great bloke. I, you know, I'd do out for him if I could. Oh man, I'm glad you mentioned that. I appreciate mm. that, mate. He deserves that. Mention Wayne Reed then. Another cracker we've had on show. Really? Aye. Have you had a bit of a do with him, have we, at time it ring, have we? Have I. Okay. Uh, if I met him on a bus. On a bus? <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like, back in, do you know what? So where we're from, there's, there's a gym, it's a pure gym now, but it used to be called called Sam Jones. It's a, it was just like a normal, yeah. everyday gym. And they had, like, a boxing area in there. They were a bloke who were training there called Andy Marlow. Has he been mentioned before? Nope. I'm surprised Connolly didn't me- mention him. So Andy Marlow were training a few amateurs, Jack Hibbert, uh, Wayne Reed, and there were a few other keep fitters. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's fucking mad and all under. So I met him on the bus and I noticed he got like some boxing gear. I said, Oh, you're a boxer? Now, I'm a fucking boxer and all. Like, you know, like you do like kids and you think you're 10 <laughs> yeah. men. I thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I did think I were 10 men like. Uh, so I ended up going to this, this gym and, and sparring Wayne at that time. Now, me, good little boxer, good on. Back foot, good going forward. You know what I mean. Know how to keep out of way. Andy Marlow goes here. Yeah, there's a big fucking tire here. Sticks one, Wayne's left right leg in because he's south foot. Sticks my left leg in. It's a right fucking smash each other. <laughs> 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 so yeah, and and oh, right up Wayne Street that because he's like yeah. a, like an inside brawler. No good for me. Uh, you know, I gear as good as I got. And then, so then I went with with Spard and just naturally on amateur scene. You know the. Bob Wright were promoter from Parsons Cross at that time and uh, he, he matched us. So I, I boxed him. Um, he would, he'd been on, he got a good record as an amateur, not too bad to be fair. He beat a kid called Gary Abin. I don't know if you've mentioned it. He's, he never turned pro, but he, he, you know, he had, I think he had a trilogy with Gary. So yeah, when I boxed him, I remember thinking, because like, he, he, he can be a bit of a mouthpiece from time to time, Wayne. But so can I, to be fair. And and we've both matured. We've both had kids since. You know what I mean? Like, life's gone on. But I remember going, I'll beat that. You know, calling my own names and that son to work to wherever I could. And he probably said the same about me. But I remember after the first round, I won it quite convincingly. Well, I believe I won it quite convincingly. I'm just, you know, like, if if you box to my game, I'll beat you. But, you know, he needed to rough me up and he just, he just didn't. But I remember on clinch, Ronnie Tucker, uh, referee, I don't know if you've heard uh, big, big on amateur scene. Yeah. Ronnie Tucker, referee, went break. I just fucking let, let a left up go right on his jaw. Oh. And he, he went back a little bit and then he just marched forward. And I, I remember him like going, I, I was doing that as a, like, I'm fucking going to come for you. And, and he, he, he looked back at me and said, you can't hurt me, basically. So that was good. I beat him. I can imagine you were cut from, you know, you're both, you know, confident guys want you yeah yeah and sound, and you know, young, yeah full of testosterone yeah that sort of thing yeah but i i, I saw him at graves park a few months back and uh yeah lovely lovely kid you know what i mean he's, he's he, doing he, a bit he forever puts himself down in front of me was there yeah he always says um yeah i was shit what do you want yeah. me on show for you or shit and i says wayne enough yeah you know no what i mean for it, is there? like at the end of the day it don't matter if i get to that ring and that gets in that square circle, I deserve respect. Yeah. And he did well for his son. He did, yeah. I mean, like... You don't yeah. want to send trail if you're numped here. You know, you, you you say it quite a lot, records are for DJs. Yeah. I mean, if you if you go into a, a boxing gym, like Wayne Reed will have pinged a few people who were respectable in his time in, in a gym. Uh, i tell you, tell you a kid that you need to mention. Uh, I, I, I nearly had a fight. I nearly boxed him as an amateur. 
prom round, he's at Lee Noble. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I was supposed to fight Lee Noble. Yeah, I've heard he can bang as well. Yeah. If you look at his, if you look at his record and who he's fought, you think can tosh. But then you fight, he fights like somebody fringe. So he's fighting all these world level people, losers. Fight somebody fringe, beats him. And that's because he, he was a good little fighter. He was. Yeah. Very good fighter. Oh, I would have uh, beat him though. <laughs> what do you have beaten? Do you think you'd have done him, mate? Yeah. I like him and Lee Duncan. I just had the number. I think. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get on to Lee Duncan. We'll get but... on to Lee Duncan a bit later on, shall yeah. we? But yeah, Lee, what a... You bring him with him all, aren't he? Brian Rose, Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, I mean, like, God rest his soul. I mean, yeah. it, again, when I was younger, I mean, there weren't no Facebook in this time. and No, there weren't, were there then? Yeah, but we had, we had, you know, Nico Campbell, Nikolai Campbell. Yeah, knowing so, quite... I, I don't talk to Nick. He's, he's, got, he's in a big fight, into this month, yeah. isn't he? Against a bloke from America coming over, isn't he? I'm not sure who he's fighting. I mean, he's, he's had a couple of tough fights recently, hasn't he? But... He, he were in between both camps, Nik- Nikolai, yeah. back in the day. So, like, he'd, he'd come to he'd come to our gym and uh, Lee Noble's saying, you know, we're going to smash that pretty boy. And, and you know, I'd go back and stuff like that. And, you know, you're on kids, aren't you, at the time? Yeah. But, like, he, he pulled that against me because he's got a sore throat, which I thought was funny. I pulled that against him because I brought my hand, which was, you know what I mean? But we never, we never crossed paths, and I'd love to have fought him just to know where I were at. And where he were at, and you know, as time goes on, you know, he's passed on now, and bless him. But you know, yeah, good fight you know, again. It's one of them. Like you look back and you go, "Fucking, I eat Martin, Martin Murray for yeah. him. If he fought everybody, never." And that one the best build up. Only, only a small old classic, wasn't it? But that Fiddler. build up with, with oh God, gee, yeah. what a, what a build up. Well, they I, hated each other, didn't they? Well, I, I, got, oh, God. I got involved in that. Did you? Yeah, like it, oh, that was it was brutal at times. I, I thought Fiddler were going to beat him. Everyone did. Everyone round here, what same? Yeah. Um, everyone round here, what same? Well, but it's... Noble kept he, he kept and he was giving it back, and he said, "I'm going to have him." Yeah. And made for him in the end, you know. Yeah. <sighs> Made for him. That were a right build up, that you know, for a small old classic. Yeah. Well, I were like saying, Dave, because David Fiddler, like some engine him, I sparred him and all, mm. he's got a right engine. But again, like, I'm all wrong for Fiddler, but he's all, and oh, bigger than Fiddler, obviously. But again, Lee, mm. all, all wrong for him, and you know, he, he, he did, he, he, he dusted him really. Did, and yeah. I never expected it. I was buzzing. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean that one of your lads, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. One of oh, listen, it'd have been perfect for our show, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he'd have probably taken over it to be quite honest. Yeah, it, it, come on, it's a shame, yeah. innit? I mean, like, I, I mean, he gets his good and his bad, does Lee? Yeah. You know, in and out. That's of the life. Ring, but that's life. Yeah. And we look at it in the ring, and like you just said, there we've only mentioned a small amount of the top caliber that we're in involved mm. with. You know what I mean? And I'd have, I'd have loved to get him on the show. And maybe that's some point in the future, like I've just done Billy and Ernie, maybe in the future we could do a little tribute to Lee, couldn't we, maybe in the future? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I called my son Ernie. Has that? Uh, I, lo- I wanted to... You know what? I like Ernie. I've always loved Ernie, haven't I? Uh, but, um, don't want to lay you That's no way. Well, <laughs> I think she's too middle class, upper uh, class, our lass. My granddad was called Ernest, so... That Brilliant was, name. Fucking Ernie. Love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm d- our lass won't let me, so I had to go for George instead. Do I? I have to go for George instead, didn't George. we, mate? Yeah. Which George, that, popular now, isn't it? That was one of mine, like, but yeah, I've had to, I've had to settle for Ernie. But yeah. some top name. They're coming <laughs> back though, aren't they now? Old school names. Yeah, yeah. But there's no Ernie's. There is now. Just mine. Yeah. Future it, world it, champion. It, future world champion. Ern, Ernie Eaton Whittam. You watch this space. <laughs> no pressure, Ernie. Yeah. No pressure, Ernie. You ain't got a fucking choice. <laughs> <laughs> and we do what uh, Eddie Ern and Barry Ern bring him in at 16 and hopefully he'll batter me. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. It'll be all right with GBM. They'll look after him, mate. Yeah. They're not going nowhere. They'll be still exactly. around a bit when he's older. Absolutely. They might be managed by them, mate. Matchmaker. Yeah, is it? Like, he you knows... I know my shit. He needs to get me a job. He does, doesn't he? See it? what happens, yeah. Uh, uh. I'll be all right that, mate. Yeah. Witten prom- promotions. Uh, well, he can if he pays me right, because I'm, I'm not cheap. Uh, he's got an operations manager, but he knows full, his future's with Kyle Witten. He does, doesn't he, mate? He does. <laughs> and I agree. I, I've got my 100% backing, mate. As long as Cheers I can back. be out second. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get paid and all. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a first. <laughs> 
But, but yeah, mate, like he says, I just want to talk a little bit about Shaquille Thompson. Do you think he's the biggest one then for you? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Do you think he can go on and win a world title? If, if it is, you know, I do think, you know, I do believe he's got, he's got all the ingredients and he had a gut test in his last fight. He had Bulgarian mm -hmm. fucking come for him, swinging for it. That's what you need though. Yeah. That's what they're there for, aren't they? Exactly. And uh, like come to win, they were swinging from hips and, and it were, it were that unorthodox that you, there were shots that he were getting hit with. And they were like, you know, he would ne normally never get hit with that, but it, because they were just, you know, like you, you, if you if you box somebody who's quick and fast, and you know you're timing them and you, you're slipping, and it's just a normal punch. But when they're coming from all sorts of angles, they were getting clipped with stuff that you just wouldn't get clipped. But eventually, after a few rounds, he sussed him out, and then it just turned into this slugfest. And and Shaquille just fucking laid low down, and by the end of it, I mean he'd still got another couple of levels to go up, Shaquille, where he could have. You could just see, we just, I'm, I'll, I'll go to this level, yeah. I'll go to that level, and and other kid were just fr fr swinging at rooftops. Yeah. It blew in some, blew in some heart, and he just clipped yeah. him. And but that, but he, that just proves it about levels, doesn't it? Mm. And he just come through a test there because how many people you're going to get on their armchairs eating the pizza, drinking the can of Stella? So you know, it might be all right. That's a kill, Thompson. We'll wait till someone clips, and then we'll see how good he is. Yeah. He's had that test now. Yeah. He's been clipped. He's gone into trenches, mm -hmm. and he's still levels to go. He's still levels above. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's no rush though with him. Oh no rush at no all. No rush. Is he'll take his time, match him, match him right. He's doing well with him so far. He's a, he's had he's a, he's, he's, he's won his last few. Where he's, he's a banger, and he's a good kid. And I, I thought at one point he had a bit of time off. He had a had a young kid, I believe, and he had he had a bit of time away from gym and stopped boxing. I thought oh, another one, mm. another one that's going to waste his talent. And then he's, they've got him in gym and all Dante Dixon. He's unreal. De Cesso, he, he went away for a while, didn't he? Yeah, I think he's fighting again soon. Yeah, again, I think he's on Cash's show. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to go to that. Are you going? Yeah. Nap's fighting on it, so I'm going to go. Mm. I might try and see if I can top a few free tickets. Cass, hint, hint. Uh, but if not, I'll fucking pay. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay, but just, listen, I know what it's like to try and sell tickets. It's and, tough. And I know his last show did really well, though, didn't it? Did I? Well, yeah. if he's doing well, he can give me a free fucking ticket. And I'll get him free. Were full. I'll, I, if he gets, if he gives me one ticket, I'll get him. I'll sell him three. There you go. Listen, there you go. It, listen if he is that cast, that him, mate, he'll be, yeah. he'll, be, he'll be knocking on the door tomorrow and getting the And one. then I'll commentate for one at fights. <laughs> oh, that's it. Lee Connolly, Shaquille Thompson, move over. Step me in. Hey, we're a buzzing that, mate. When I went in corner, when Fonz, um, oh yeah, did that, won, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That was great. It said, must be like I said, we've said it before on the that must be a look at home of Fonz because his last two wins have been there. Oh, yeah. His last two wins, we were both oh. there for him. Is he on this show? I hope not. Because <laughs> you're not you going. I'm okay. not going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm away yeah. that weekend, mate. Um, but I did get asked to be to go, mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think in the Yorkshire, I think Shaquille, and I also, I'm a bit biased with him from Barley, but I also think Callum Simpson as well. Yeah. What do you reckon? Like, listen, Callum's absolutely quality, and you know he's got he's got match room behind him. Is it match room or is it Queensbury? It no, is we um what do they call him now Ben Shalom. Oh Sky, yeah, he's with Sky, yeah, yeah. Sky boxer, yeah boxer. Sorry. That's it. I knew it was Sky, but I knew the that's got it right. Yeah, it's, boxer. Boxer. it's called boxer, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's you know he's he's no mug, and he's a, he's a great kid himself. Hopefully, it's a collision course, you know, for future. But yeah, let's build them both. I don't think they want to fight each other, from what I gather. I don't know. Obviously, I know if you were Callum's um, gym mates, if you've got a couple of road warriors in there, Weem and stuff, and obviously I've talked to um, Carl Sampson that about mm. Shaquille from the other side, and I just don't know. They just never get mentioned in the same sentence. You know what I mean? Which is very yeah. strange. You know, like you'll say, oh, yeah, I think he's going to blow. I think he blows actually away now. and He beats yeah. actually, but, you know. But then you can't rule Mark Jeffers out either in that mm. weight for me. Mm. He's the biggest danger man for them all around well, it's, here. It's, it's a good weight division it to is. be in. And but, he gets unlooked a lot, does Mark Jeffers, a lot. But but no rush. They hope they both need to go on their own paths. They need to go on their test. But ultimately, if, they, if they're good enough, they're going to clash anyway because you get to that British level, Commonwealth, European level. If you're running in and around, you're going to fight each other. So see, see what happens. But yeah, no, no rush. See who comes through the test. They've got to go through that international level. Yeah. And then where they land, they land. 
hundred percent, mate. Should we go on to your career a little bit then, mate? Can do. Scarf, uh, what scarf are asking all questions? He tries, mate, he tries. I'm I'm just looking at names on that list. Oh yeah. <laughs> um but I want to mention Lee Duncan, mate. The real deal. The real deal. He seems a great guy, you know, and yes. he did send us a um, a message over to you, and he he just got nothing but admiration and respect for you, mate. To oh, be honest, him. and he said at the time they're a bit of yeah. you know. He said, but that's just the way it just is. Way it is, yeah. And I can tell you that kind of you're yeah. a kid, mate. And um, he, he had nothing but admiration for you. Um, so how did the fights go? <laughs> I'm well, just rubbing my hands for a minute, you know. Again, so he, he were pally, he were pals with Lee Noble. So in amateurs when we boxed, you know, we crossed paths and uh, I was just full of testosterone. Yeah. Wanted to just smash his head in, basically, because obviously we'd had back and forth. That had come through Nico, Nikolai. Yeah. So he, like, He's going to mention... Wait till I get home today. He's <laughs> going to get a message him. He's yeah. having it him. Yeah. So we, we were going back and forth through Nikolai, not through Facebook. It's like the mess in a bottle, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so I boxed him as an amateur and I were probably were going to stop him. Uh, he, were, he were going... Well, he might think differently, but he ended. He was just holding and holding. He got got disqualified in the end, and I, I walked out of that thinking, "Fucking, I wish I'd have stopped him." You know what I mean? Set a statement, but because of how it went and how one sided it were, I thought to myself, "Like he he he." he when I turned pro, he called for me through Dennis Hobson again. Like, so Dennis is at me going, "Oh, Lee Duncan wants to fight ya." He got like zero wins, two two losses. Zero draws. So yeah, no worries, I'll shit him. <laughs> so I just got back from Kos, you know, fights in four weeks. Fucking hell, four weeks. So I'm killing myself to make weight. I had to get to twelve seven. I were about fourteen stone. Oh, um, a lot in it. Yeah, it and I know I weren't fat like I am now. I were I were quite I were quite slim at time. So you know, just a lot of running, a lot of sparring, things like that. And what he don't know, and nobody really knows, un- unless you were close to me, is two days before the fight, I were in hospital on a drip, dehydrated. Oh, God. Yeah, and, and this day and age, you don't realise how much of a, a risk that is, you know what I mean, with yeah. what's happened to other people. But I was yeah. severely dehydrated. But And then I remember like, I was supposed to go in on Friday to, you know, do me, like, shatter and yeah. stretch and, See where I'm at on weight and stuff, and all like, you know, I'm not coming. I'm just gonna lay in bed. And uh, but I still thought I've got enough to beat Lee Duncan. He's he's, he's lost two fights. Yeah. Well, okay, get in ring. I thought I'm gonna knock him out here. Right, little busy cunt. Oh, he is. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's a and, <laughs> and, and you know, you, you go away for it. When, again, in hindsight, you look into things and you go, amateurs not right for him. You know what I mean? His style, professional boxing. They're all suited to that. Do you know what I mean? So I believe that first fight were I were better in first fight than I were at second fight, even though like last two rounds I were I were gone. Yeah. I were out of my feet because I were that dehydrated. I just had to see it round through it. I, I remember like Not surprised though, mate. He hit me with a nothing punch in fifth round and uh, there were like purple stars, everything. And the, he just doesn't have a killer instinct as yeah. a boxer. You know, like if if he'd have known that I were hurt, which he didn't know. It, it could have got me out of there because I were, my legs were just from underneath me. But yeah. I, I managed to cruise relay and I got to, when I got to final bell, he raised both his hands. Mm. I was like, and I was spent. And maybe that's because I was spent. That referee's gone, oh, I'm going to get a draw. I'll just, you know what I mean? I can, I can, he could have potentially gone, oh, one at rounds were a bit mixed, couldn't, couldn't decide. But I would definitely, in my opinion, and all my team, everybody I know, mm. like, you got robbed there. Like, I still look at it now as a robbery. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was pissed off about that. So I went back to the change room and says, I'm fighting him again, Dennis. And then I got myself into proper shape. So for so the second fight, I mean, I were like running, gym. I mean, I didn't eat very well anyway, mm-hmm. but I was still fit. And I, and I went back into the second fight, fit as a fiddle, only to get fucking battered for two rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so like comes comes out. Fuck, fuck, got him with Mayweather. He was like, puff, puff. he's he's always been quick though. Yeah, he's so slick, isn't he? Yeah, and I like, I'm like, fucking, how's this kid got a shit record? He's like, and he'd won a few fights after mm. I'd drawn with him because it took a while to to get rematched because we were supposed to box on a December card and I couldn't I couldn't sell my own piss. Yeah, so we we managed to get it on in February, um, and uh, 
so sold enough tickets to fight him because you have to pay for you, know, you have to sell enough tickets to pay for them. Yeah, it's a nightmare. So I had to like sell a minimum of sixty tickets, and I got paid pittance. Yeah. So yeah, cheers, Lee. You owe me some money. <laughs> He's doing well in life these days. He is, isn't he? I Get think. What's he doing hands. that? He's got I don't, a little business, hasn't he now? Yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly no, what I he's don't. doing, but he, he's doing well. And do you know what? You know, he's, he's quite inspirational. He, the AGs at now, he's really looked after him, then. Yeah, he looked well. Anyway, fucking first two rounds, he just pinged me all over, and I went back to the corner. And I went, fuck this game plan. I'm getting on his chest, um, and I just stuck it on him, and I won four rounds on bounce mm. and uh, and got win. I remember going out back after the third round and going, "That's it, now I've got him," mm. and I, I just got his. I've just got his number. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it's, I, we could fight 10 times and I'd beat him 10 times. I hope you don't see that as disrespect. I just feel like I boxed him three times and all three times I, I feel like I would just, not, not. I'm not a better fighter than him. I'm not a better boxer than him, but I've just got somewhere where I can go, where I can dig a result out against mm. him. The way it goes, mate, isn't it? Any regrets in career, mate? Do you wish you'd have carried on a bit longer or were you just, yeah. were you do you know what I mean? I mean, big regrets now. That, that's what I mean. Like I, at I, the time, though, it, it was. I hope it. I hope this hits people like Shaquille and Dante, Liam Cameron, and go, fuck me! I have got a real talent here, and I need to do something with it. And yeah. I think Liam's there. I think he's where he needs to be in right head space, and you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, he gets a good result out of Lyndon Arthur. But I just got so many regrets, and I, I, I'm lo- looking at these kids now and go, you've got a god-given talent, but also. You've got a platform. Yeah. It was different for us. You know what I mean? We didn't have all these social... We did have social media at some point, but it weren't on your phone in, your, in palm of your hand. It were mm. you're logging onto a desktop PC, yeah. dial-up modem, yeah. and then getting on. Yeah, you look for a reply, weren't you, five hours later, weren't you? Yeah. Whereas yeah. now it's just instant, isn't it? It's, yeah. just, it's just all there for you, isn't it, on a plate? So, yeah, I mean... It's, like, good, I, it's, got, it's good and it's bad. Yeah, and it's you know it's such a small window of your life, you know what I mean? You know, I've blinked and I'm you know, excuse me, gearing up to fodder. So like you know, you, your professional career is anything between eighteen to thirty one, thirty two, maybe sometimes thirty five. Such a small window, and you can secure your future with it. So just gear everything, and if it don't work out, what's worse that's going to happen? As long as obviously you know, medically you're medically all right. That's that's the. But what's worse that can happen if you if you're not good enough? At least you try. Like, I don't know if I were good enough or not good enough. In my head, I think I don't think I were, you know, if we're going to go one way or other, I were either going to do all right and potentially box to a British title level and probably, you know, find my level or I'm going to go journeyman route. Mm. But I was just too proud to, to have that them losses. Think fucking differently now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're not the but only I, one who's thought yeah, that. I yeah. mean, we've got Johnny Musgrave on here. Uh, he yeah. was, you know, the old beer engine. I mean, he were quite slick and good it'd, it'd have been perfect for on the road mm. and every time i see him now he'll say i wish i'd have gone on road now mm. yeah people don't understand it you know, no, you know don't. The, like do you know when clinton woods were training for world cha- championships he got lee swaby in gym yeah dean walker amazing oh. mark crench yeah you know what i mean some of these i mean some had winning records some went on to have losing records mm. but you know these people are ones that support him in gym for a world title fight while they're doing their their journeyman stuff yeah. for, not necessarily crunchy, he's not really a journeyman, I wouldn't say. But, do you know what I mean? They're vital not only to the game itself, but in the gym, the part of the community. Yeah. And again, I'm like, I mean, yeah. fucking, seeing Lee Connolly in gym is, you know, fucking, like, size of Frodo. Get, <laughs> getting hit by fucking trucks, you know what I mean? And not going down, like, cruiserweights, like, what the fuck are you doing in there with a cruiserweight getting chinned? He never, ever, ever knew when to, uh, to quit, did he, that guy? No. And that... <laughs> we, we called him Gypsy Lee. It was just fucking <laughs> hard cunt, didn't it? Yeah, we are, we are. <laughs> I can't remember when Ryan Hardy wrote him in, wrote at Barsley Star, didn't he? And got me at Star. <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> He's a fucking idiot, him. <laughs> he, he, wrote, he, wrote, he wrote Sheffield Star, and he says, oh, Lee Con. Do you know he was a traveller? <laughs> and then they printed it. <laughs> Lee Connolly. No, no, there's no... <laughs> From the tra- <laughs> Got no. his boxing and travelling rules, and he went, he went looking for him. Like, <laughs> yeah. only Ryan Hardy could do that, mate. Yeah. Only Ryan Hardy could do that. Well, honestly, I've, having them both around gym and just being in the middle of it was just hilarious. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd want to go to the gym because you want to know what was going off. How <laughs> funny it were. But that's what that's what these community gyms do, don't they? Exactly. You know, I know sometimes boxing gets a bad rep and stuff, but it also has 
gets a lot of kids off the street, doesn't it? Uh, I'm very vocal about this. So I'm very passionate about it. Yeah. Especially, uh, you know, Sheffield, because more so I'm from Sheffield, but also surrounding areas uh, in South Yorkshire. But, you know, for me, you know, I was just a timid kid at 16 years old and I, and I met the right person at the right time in my life who got me into boxing and I've become a different kid. You know, racism around them times were like rife, you know what I mean? And you not you don't wake up one day and you're racist, you're taught it. But you go into these gyms and there's different backgrounds, different cultures, you know what I mean? And you, you start to be like, actually, we're not different. We just, we've got different beliefs maybe, you know, we don't do things different, we eat different foods maybe. But actually, you know, we're going to, we're going to ring and we, we spar and we try and get the best out of each other, you know. You know, I, I'm... I'm I'm not Muslim, but some of my friends like I, I, back in the day. I'm happy, I'm happy to say, I once upon a time I used to think, oh, fuck it, yeah, Muslims. Mm. But why? Just because media tell me I hate Muslims, I don't hate Muslims. Yeah. Actually, I've got a lot of respect for people from from the Muslim religion, and and I wouldn't have learnt that on my own accord. No, if it, if I didn't, you know, get to know people from that faith and understand them. You know what I mean? I've just been brainwashed by media basically yeah absolutely percent i mean i went um i went and did my teaching assistant training and i, I spent three years in sheffield in winkerbank mm. as you know from barnsley we don't really get many yeah, yeah. ethnic minorities and stuff like that around here we get him you know more more in now but when i did my teaching assistant, i we're only like 10 or 12 years ago you know when i went and witnessed it it opened my eyes yeah you know and it opened it for it the better yeah exactly you know, it really did and like you said, some people can get, you know, they get brainwashed by stuff, don't yeah. you? And um, but then, best thing that ever happened to me, it changed me. It changed my opinion 100%. But then it's testament to people like your Brendan Ingalls, your, your Glyn Rhodes, your, your Sean Thickets. Now, these are people that are like bringing communities together and, um, and bringing people, you know, together across Sheffield, across South Yorkshire and for the better. Like, honestly, you go to a boxing gym, you become a family. And it's mesmerizing. Like everybody at some point, especially this day and age, because everybody's just a fan of mm. put them in a boxing gym and learn discipline, respect. You know, it, it goes a long way. You know, like you, if you go to a football game, you know, predominantly white. I'm not saying that's bad. You know, what I mean, it's predominantly white, especially in Sheffield. Mm. You go to a boxing gym, you get everybody, and that's where you learn to to respect each other. I yeah. think that's where I learned it all. 100%. And it brings people together. Mm. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, mate? 100%. And it can only be a positive yeah. as far as I'm concerned. And Roger Sampson, he needs a mention all. And Grant Smith. Oh, Roger Sampson. He, he talks to me, Roger now, so I must have got his um, respect. Because <laughs> yeah. he, 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 I can imagine it. Good bloke. Yeah, he's a great bloke. And he, well, I was in the corner with Roger mm. when Fonz um, yeah. won. And he kept looking at me. And I says, I, he, obviously, I can't remember his partner in crime he had him on that night with funds but um i says you don't need me roger there's two on you and he goes no i want you in there and i want you to to learn mm. off of us so you know and all better to learn off than him yeah. and we were talking obviously like and he says I'm gonna get him mark he's gonna win this fund yeah. he's, he's blowing he's blowing this kid and he were totally right and there's something about i mean the the special aren't there these certain yeah. people are special yeah you know yeah. like your glenn rhodes and and, right. the, and, and the sacrifice that they make to be f f away from their families. I mean, at minute, like, I mean, I just, I don't want to sacrifice being away from my family. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're my priority at minute. Like, like today, I, I, I've come here, you know, after work. Mm. I'm not seeing my kids till tomorrow. And at the minute, I just want to make sure that they know that I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, hundred. I agree 100%. But then, mate. these people, like Sean, never at home. Yeah. Uh, it's tough, isn't it, mate? Mm. But if it was people like them, but with the talent we've got oh, now, legends. would we? Yeah, exactly. Around this area. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anybody else you want to mention, mate? And I was... Liam Wright. I was about, yeah. I was about to say, Liam, Liam another Wright, blade. Because right. he's, got, he's got the questions here. I've got no... I'm, I'm off the cuff. The statements. Statements, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> no question. All right. So, I've so, been off the cuff, me, that knows. So, Liam Wright. So, my best mate, Aaron, who I mentioned earlier, yeah. who got me into boxing, he worked at Morrison's at Halfway. Yeah. In Sheffield. And Liam Wright worked there, so they become mates. And then he introduced me to him. And then, you know, we used to just go out normal. And then he, oh, I'll do a bit of keep fitting, come with you mm. to the boxing gym. And then obviously he went on to come with Journeyman himself, didn't he? Really? He did. 
honestly, it's like like Nat Tarley were talking about earlier. Liam, there's, there's nobody in the world who trains harder than him. Just not, <laughs> just not got the right genes for it. Do you know what I mean? He's just not got the out and out. If he had the ability, it'd have been special. But you know, it 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 train for hours, days, weeks. Like I fucking, I, I say, who said to him? I said, mate, you run too much. I run every day. Like you're gonna kill you then. You know, you got he loves running though. I'm oh really yeah, he still does now. Yeah. He still no. does now. So, so he's from the same area as me. Mm. So like he's not far, like around, just around the corner. And we've had kids around the same time as well. So I see him every now and again. It. My daughter goes to dance. His daughter goes to dance. So mm. we, we we cross paths. But like, I'm very glad that he's he's helping Sean. I think he's perfect to help Sean. Yeah. And you know what? We've had a lot of guests on this show, and Scarfy will agree with this as well. He talks very well about mm. you know. Didn't he? Oh, the only person was giving me a mention, the bastards. He yeah. did. I, I'll have a word with him, Carl. Right, we'll get a black. I've got a blacklist for everybody. If I need to put him on, we can <laughs> Billy put him Boyle, on. Billy Boyle, get him on. Yeah. Oh, Black Billy Boyle's going to get it. Talk about yeah. Billy, definitely. Billy Boyle. <laughs> um, don't get me on, Mark. I'll not talk for two minutes. <laughs> An hour later, we're still at him, wasn't it? <laughs> we didn't mention Carl Whitten. No. <laughs> Shocking. No, a bastard. <laughs> How did you go on that fight, mate? Anyway, that was your final fight, wasn't it? Yeah, tough. Yeah. Yeah. They said he was tough, you know. I had so my, my my fourth fight against James Tucker. I broke my hand in the first round. Oh, but I, I, I schooled him. Like I didn't, I didn't realize it was broken until I'm. I had no idea. Well, that adrenaline that got. What, how did you yeah. get through that? You know what I mean? Like it didn't really start kicking in pain until like yeah. third round. And then fourth round, I just coasted it. So we were only four rounder. Respect for that, mate. But like <laughs> you can see, I've like, still got a bump there. Like mm. you know what I mean? So it's still you know, a bit, but yeah. But me, my hand were just never right after that. Yeah. Um, so training camp didn't go too well anyway, and I don't know if like if there's pictures of me chucking an uppercut and I just look like this bean pole, and he's built like fucking bodybuilder. He's like massive. Yeah. Like you're a big lad, and I, I remember like when um it well when fight got agreed in them days it weren't like a you know let's let's talk about your options. Mm. Sean kept it from me for a while. Right. And I was like, oh, I'm fucking fighting. So I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. As if I'd bottle it, like, I'm never going to bottle it. I'd rather fucking... I can't, I can't imagine you've got that no. in you, to be honest, mate. No, I'm not. Just by speaking to you, it's not in your DNA, mate. The, well, that's it. It's just not like, I'd, I'd rather fucking get battered than bottle it, you know what I mean? So anyway, he it says, he just told me when you're fighting Billy Boyle. What the fuck am I fighting him for? He was like a cruiserweight. He's just fought Hastings Rosane. Like, and he was a big, like, they're all massive. Anyway, but all right, well, not, whatever. I'll fight him. And, he'd, you know, he'd lost to Cleverly at the time and mm. uh, over Mackenzie got to him and all, didn't he? Yeah, he did. So I thought, you know, he's on decline, you know. Let's, see, let's let's get in with him and see where I'm at, basically. But then Star, Star got in touch with me. So, and I was like, fucking, okay, let's, let's make it. Wasn't a little bit, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's getting a bit tasty, this. So I got straight into it, didn't I? I was like, well, he's a massive Wednesday fan. I'm a massive United fan. It's a derby, this, you know what I mean? Then I've got Dennis Hobbs on the phone to me going, what are you fucking doing? There's going to be a riot if you carry on like this. They think I'll worry me. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't fight over football. I'm a boxer. Like, you know what I mean? I just want to create that sort of atmosphere and, and I want to beat him. I don't want to lose to a Wednesday night. Yeah. Last thing I want to do. He's but, a big Wednesday night and all, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, mm-hmm. yeah. He's, he is like, he, he fucking messages me every birthday saying happy birthday, you piggy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's off. I was uh, cheating. And then obviously, like, we're not we're not clever enough to come up with different nicknames for each other, so we just call each other pig. Yeah. Uh, so um, <laughs> so when I got when I the time I got to weigh in and stuff, I, honestly, I think I weighed like twelve eight or something yeah. like that. He weighed like twelve thirteen, twelve fourteen. Mm. Didn't think I was it at the time, like. But I remember first two rounds, you know, like I went I went on back foot, popping away, bagged them for two rounds quite easily, and then I thought. You know, I've, I've sold a lot of tickets here. You know, I'm, it's top at Bill. I've, I'm going to go and trade with him a little bit and try and try and get him out there. Okay, well, can't really bang you if I'm honest, but obviously I thought if I can get him with a decent body shot, I'm, I've took wind out of a few people, see how I go. Worst decision I've ever made. Like, it, like, it was fucking just bigger than me, stronger than men. They were like chasing me down and, you know, like even, you know, when you got into clinches and just lean on me. It, 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 just drains you, doesn't it? Yeah, it'd lean on me. And I was like, after the third round, I went to the corner. I went, fucking hell. And then Sean, like, just went, what are you fucking doing? Like, 
you've just, what are you doing? Like, you were boxing smart. You're having him. He says, how you feel? I says, be honest, God, I'm blowing. He went, get out of the end. I says, get on your back foot and start fucking pot shotting again. And I did. I went out there and I had a good, I had a good fourth round. I was pot shotting away and I was still like tired. I feel like, I'm like this, this fight's getting to me a bit here. Like I've, I've had a bad camp. I did have a bad camp, but you know, like start, I'm starting to question myself yeah. in this fourth round. Not much in your mind, is there? No. Well, just as about to come to end at fourth round, I've, I, I, I don't know if I've rolled or what, but he's come up with crashed heads and I've just gone, Psh! and I'm like, Oh, like, what's going off here? Like, and it went ding, ding at the same time. I looked at the floor, I saw blood just dropping to the floor, and I've got cut. And I got in corner, and I was, I was sound. I was like, oh, blowing, but I was sound, and I went, I went right, and and uh, Sean's going, oh, he's got a cut, he's got a cut, adrenaline, adrenaline. I went calm, and yeah. I, I asked for calm, but in mind, I'm thinking, I've got two more rounds of this cunt coming at me. Yeah, and fucking, I, I, and I'm I'm not afraid to say this either. Look. Uh, I would foster come all up to me every minute. Oh, it's deep that, and I think my mind. I'm like, I hope you call it and go take another decision here. And he did. If I remember rightly, it was running down here. Bad and then. No, not running into your eye though. No, it went into my eye. No, it was running down here. So in theory, if I look back, shouldn't have stopped it. No, and I'm happy to admit that. But I was like, fucking, okay, that's it. It's win. Fuck this kid off. He's a nightmare. <laughs> but oh, <laughs> I went to the corner and. Uh, I saw Glenn and he looked at me like I'd just took a shit in kettle. <laughs> and he like shut my hand, but he weren't happy. I can imagine he's like, that is a war horse, isn't he? Yeah, no, but and, and, fair, and credit where credit's due, you know, he, he was passionate about his kid, you know what I mean? And He still is now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. That's Sean, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he was fuming because they thought they were going to get me out of there in the last couple of rounds. I, I think I did have enough to hang on. I were blowing, but I, I got enough nouse about me to get around and evade his shots. He weren't quick enough to to really pin me down, but it was just fucking ever. Do you know? And I'd got out after a four round fight thinking I'd just done 10 rounds. And, mm. and I just thought, listen, there's, there's something that I'm doing wrong. Turns out like years and years later. So my mum, bless her, she's she's not with us anymore, but she were a really heavy smoker. Never smoked in my life, ate it. And uh, work stopped, you know, stopped over. They come in mm. NHS and they're like, Blow into this and see how much you smoke. I said, I don't smoke. I said, all right, we'll just blow in, see, how, see your lung capacity. So I blew. My lung capacity is if I smoke 20 a day. Yeah. That's because they're all passive smoking. It is. It's, it's amazing that because I remember when, um, obviously, mum and dad were, dad's so not here now, massive say. smokers. Yeah. And, you know, people walk into our house and say, oh, it fucking stinks of mm. cigs in here, Shecky. And I said, well, yeah, don't, I can't smell it. And it's I moved out with our missus, with our lass. And um, I come back two weeks later, oh, and the smell. You become immune to it, don't you? Become you become immune to it. Mm. When you my mum and dad broke up and I used to like go and visit my mum or come back and my mm. clothes just fucking ponged. But like, and then obviously, you know, as time went on, she then started smoking outside and things changed, you mm. know what I mean? But damage were already done. I'd, my lungs were fucked. Mm. So mm. I, I, honestly, like you asked Sean, you know, he's got me fit as a fiddle, but I were only ever eight rounds fit, if that. Because mm. I, just, I just couldn't bridge that gap. You know, I, I, I'd spar Jamie Ward. Uh, he, he, might, he might have heard his I name. have heard of Jamie yeah, Ward, Jamie yeah. Jamie Ward. So he, he, you know, like James Tucker or a box. The name's been mentioned. When someone you mention it, it rung a bell, but I can't yeah. say I've seen him fight. Well, he, he pinged Jamie Ward. Right. I think he rematched him and Jamie Ward beat him. But Jamie Ward were my team partner. Well, our gym mate. So when I went to fight James Tucker, I was like, oh, I've got to get one back for Jim here. Yeah. But it, it were a walking part, really. If I'd not brought my hand, I'd have, I'd have probably forced a stoppage, maybe. Well, mm. you know what these journeymen are. They don't get fucking stopped, do they? Not, on, not when they're not going to be out for 28 days, mate, and losing money. Yeah. <laughs> that is for sure. So after that boil fight, then, what happened? You just fall out with it, or you just thought that yeah. worrying up? Were it were, frustrating or what? Just Yeah, like, I, I were in a bit of financial problems, and, you know, like, you know, I just taped it. I was, like, trying to focus on, like, working career and, Wanted to go out a bit more, like just you know, didn't. I went just. You've got to be fucking. How old were you, Carl? When this? I bet twenty one, twenty two. So young, in it, mm. and you think I can naive. imagine. Yeah, naive. I was naive, and I still were about him because then Ryan Hardy had his sort of career, and I were in background helping him from time to time, sparring with him. But like, I were never, you know, I were never fit again. Never like proper 
mm. and until just before COVID, I had a I had a good year and a half where I had three stag dudes back to back, and I looked fucking unreal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but other than that, like yeah, I've just been pottering about gyms every now and again. You know, I'm I'm one or other. I must be riddled with ADHD. Me, like I'm I'm either like in a rut, can eating cheese on toast all the time, or I'm like chicken and rice running in the morning boxing at night but i've got th- two two young children now and that's all my focus at this moment in time and you know i like i like to go to gym and you know put my two pence in where is he and help my part from time to time but other than that it's just i need i need that little bit of space so that i can raise my kids and then 100 percent. i mean family come first mate mm-hmm. I mean, I get my my job up to be a stay at home dad, mate, myself. Did you? Yeah. God well, bless you. Um, and family comes first, mate, yeah. doesn't it? But just speaking to you, I can tell you've got a passion about it, mate. You know, I knew you knew what you're on about when you said you're going to yeah. come on. I'd love to, I'd love to be a part of it in some way, shape, or form. I think you will be in the future, mate. You Maybe. know, you've got plenty of time on your hands, mm. mate. Maybe we'll see. You, you know, you, like you said, family comes first, mate. But there's plenty of time, mm. mate. There's plenty of time. He's a waste of talent, Carl. Carl Sampson. Carl Sampson is amazing. Yeah. Absolute amazing. But, his, his dad hates it every time he goes into a corner, doesn't he? Yeah. I've not heard his name, name mentioned for a while, Carl. No, oh, he's back fighting again. He was out yeah. last week. Um, yeah. yeah um... He, um, Carl, I, I remember his first amateur fight when he was a kid and it just bags of talent. Or like, you know, I had every hope for him. And he could have done, could have done, like, you don't get to schoolboy championships if you're no. a wet wipe, you know what I mean? Oh, God, no. And then, um, Obviously, he, he just fell off at radar, fell out of the, whatever you do, like, you know. He admits it himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he just said, I want to go on road. And like you said, I think he's, he's, I think if you asked him still now, his dream would be to win a central air from a way corner, but I don't right. think it'll ever happen. Could do, but he just, like, he chooses not to win though, doesn't he? So that's a problem. Needs mm. work. We've got three kids. Fucking hell. Needs a TV. They got there, he's a, he's, <laughs> but yeah, who was your favourite journey, man, mate, would you say? Fucking Sid Razak, surely. Oh. <laughs> he dropped Femme. Oh. Like one of our lads, he dropped him. I was like, what the fuck's going off here? Thought Femme were going to lose and then he ended up winning like... So, yeah, got to be Sid Razak, surely. Mm. Oh, or Elvis Doobie. Oh, uh, <laughs> Doobie gets a mention a lot, <laughs> yeah, doesn't he? He does. Razak, I love to get on. Aye. I would love to get Razak on. He's got some fucking stories. Oh, and obviously, me, me old pal Liam Wright, Lee Connolly, Carl. Like if it's you know, I've, I've been they all deserve these. massive respect, yeah. don't they? But people don't understand, you know. Like I, I would at work say, "Oh, I'm at Journeyman Cave. What's it about? Journeyman? Oh, bums then? Yeah. Well, you ain't got a fucking clue, mate. Because if, yeah. if you went, if you went, if you went into the gym, they'll fucking twist you up, mate. You know what I mean? You ain't got a clue. Yeah. And a lot of time as well, if you take the piss, they will get you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I think that's what happened with Fonz when I'm we were there. That's proven mm-hmm. by that, you know. it? Definitely. Yeah, like do you know, like on, 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 on Wayne Reed. This is another one for you, like. On another day, he, he might have beat me, but he was just my night. He was a good kid, a good fighter, he's awkward. And like, if he's talking to him saying down, he, he would have paid an ass to fight. Everyone says that, you know. Yeah. People have said that, though, yeah. Yeah, they will do. Who else have I not mentioned? Ben Davis. Ben. Oh, yeah. We'll definitely put Ben in. Well, so again, I mean, this is... Did you enjoy his podcast, by the way? Yeah, I loved it, actually. Yeah. He'll, he'll be your best mate then now. <laughs> Do you know what it is with Ben? Is It's all about relevancy. Yeah. And it, it feels like when I'm listening to his podcast, it will become relatable. So I, I've, I've sparred with Lewis Taylor in the past as well. So, you know, I, when when they were fighting, I thought, oh, that was going to be a good little ding dong. But I remember sparring with him. I think I've, I, I, I've probably never sparred more than four rounds or six rounds with him. Mm. And... He's rating what he says. It takes him about two, two, three rounds to get warmed up anyway. So I'm all right with that. And as you know, he don't move his fucking head. <laughs> so pop, 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 three rounds in bank. Yeah. Even if you're sparring, you're like, yeah, three rounds. And then, like I say, just, just another busy cunt, like fucking hard as nails. Mm. And after that, once he's warmed up and he's got chuffing fucking WD-40 in, in system, it just fucking lets loose, doesn't it? He's an absolute tank, um, isn't he? Yeah. And and obviously he's looked after him then. It's not like I mean, don't booze. You know, like you say, he's gonna live in a king caravan somewhere. He's not, yeah. But he's just another one of them. Just working class, hard, took it serious. Like probably not gifted with talent, but 
it's a somewhat wins he's got on his record. Yeah. And he gives Ben's the kind of guy is when he sets his sights on something, mm. it's one hundred percent in yeah. it. Uh before I had him on show, he showed me a picture, so look at this picture here, Mark. And he showed me a picture of me and it was a picture of him on holiday. He was just steering a boat. Yeah. And to me, he just looked like a fit lad. Yeah, yeah. And he said to me, he says, Look, he says, I noticed I'd got a bit of weight on this shoulder, a bit of weight down here. And he said, I'm not having that. Uh, and he says, within two weeks, it was shredded yeah. completely. Pisses me off all that. Absolutely <laughs> shredded. Yeah, me and, all. and I know he's, I know like he's, I think he's helping with Mar- Marcy and Prosco's yeah, dad, yeah. Prosco's dad at minute. And it, I know. Mad boy. Yeah, respect. And I know he's doing it out of, he's doing it for free as well, yeah. which is great. But he says, I'm putting a lot of time ref into you. He says, you fucking do it right. And he says, yeah. you follow it to a T. And he does. You know, like it, you know, like uh, he were busy mates with uh, Ben Wager mm. and he helped him out a lot. And they were like, you know, together all the time. Like, I needed a, I needed a Ben Davies in my life. You know, yeah. if, it, if I'd have crossed paths with him at the right time and got Pally Pally with him and he'd help me out, you know, like sometimes you just need that. Oh, what I had were fucking Ryan Harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine you're having yeah. a right good time next yeah. week. That so, is for sure. I've not seen him for years and we were talking over at Fury Fight. And he said he was in Albufeira, so we'll have a few pints. We'll have to meet up, you know. For, we, we see it saying we have to come up to your end and have a few drinks, mate, yeah. together because yeah. I know ta- and we, we say it and yeah, he says ta- time, you don't get enough time, do we? But we've threatened to see Ray a few times, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, it's never happened. We said, so. it's, it's getting time, we'll have to come up to your end. Yeah. Is he anywhere near you, Ryan? No. <laughs> <laughs> No. Is that a good thing? He's, <laughs> he's, uh, no, that, that, that's probably why we don't cross paths ever, like, but you know, there's, there's a city centre. I remember I when I'm, it's crazy. It's crazy that Kremlin. I went. I went. I always meet usually fighters before I'm, I get on show to. Yeah, yeah. Cause obviously, cause what we do, yeah, especially yeah. when I first started it, and Ryan won it at the beginning, won he? Mm. People would say you're taking the fucking piss out of me, you know, because I wanted to interview him, and mm. they really thought I'd take it. Mickey and Ryan were one of them at back of them at first. All right. And I says, no, we'll meet up at um, at Meadowall for a coffee. So I got on train because I don't drive. Cause mm. I went to Meadowall and he come up in his work gear. And he says, oh, I said, where are you based? And I says, Barnsley. He goes, oh, I've just come from Barnsley now. Oh, <laughs> like, God. Fucking hell. I just... <laughs> <laughs> right. Fucking shite at communication, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I've just uh, been, well, I worked there and I went round and I thought, oh, fucking dead yeah. right. Yeah, I've, I've not seen him for a while. But he's a like, great guy. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know what? After all, after all the, you know, we've had nearly 50-odd guests on here and I'm honestly saying this truthfully, I ain't, we entered a bad one. You know, yeah, they're all yeah. great guys. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, I, I, and when time goes on, you know, like, like, right, I've not spoke to, I've not seen Ryan, and we've had a bit of a in between, which you know I'm not going mm. to, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing him. I've missed a come. Yeah. The only problem is, he's a massive Wednesday fan, isn't it? Well, you but, can put that aside when England's there, mate. Everything yeah, goes yeah, aside. Yeah, exactly. Everyone goes aside when the Euros. Well, I'm looking come. forward to seeing him, and you know, having a tequila or something. And, oh well, there'll not be not be pints of water or coke, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. But I look forward to that, mate. But all I can say, mate, thank you very much for coming. It's Always. been an absolute p- pleasure to see you, on. mate. Appreciate Brilliant. it. Anytime, thank mate. You. All the best. All the best. Take care. The Journeyman Cave is produced by James Proud. Music by Ryan Carrier. Special thanks to Rhythm Inc. Studios for hosting. All views expressed are of the guests only. The Journeyman Cave and Horse bear no responsibility for any opinions given. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at The Journeyman Cave. <laughs>